So I think it's time for a good old coffee chat. Hope you're doing well and fine. Thank you very much. And welcome to the Asia show. Today we're going to talk about Cambodia and the city where I live in Siam Rip. Has a population, I think, around about a million people. And as some people have quoted, it's like living in Bangkok maybe 20 years ago, which is great because I used to live in Bangkok in the, you could say, mid-1990s and it was a fantastic time. Living here, once you get your visa all sorted out, then you can go to the bank. All you need is the right visa, a tourist visa. You can't get a bank account, but with a, you could say, ordinary visa, as they call it here, you can. I went to the bank today, quite simply, and I got a new credit card. The reason being I don't like the bank that I go to now. Best bank here, I would say ABA. You can go there with your passport and your correct visa, like your business visa, your student visa, your work permit, your retirement visa, whatever it is, and they will give you a bank account. You just need to put money. And it's really great because they have the QR code, so most of the time you don't actually need to bring cash. There's plenty of ATMs. Some people think of, when they think of Cambodia, they go back in time to the 1970s and they think what it was like in that particular decade or the 1980s, which it wasn't the best in the world, to be really honest. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of movies, the same as you've seen lots of movies about Vietnam. It is quite modern, um, but it has characteristics. And simply today, I got on my motorbike, I have a license, I put my helmet on, I'm driving about 50 or 60 kilometers an hour along the highway, or just getting into the city, and then just popped into the bank. The bank, everyone there speaks English, um, it's a requirement for like a job like that. And it was quite a long process, it was like two hours to get what I was doing there for, but everything sorted. This is what life is like. Then I had to go to another bank, so it's sort of like a business day today, just um, moving things around. Next week, I do have to get my renewal of my retirement visa, and I'm just going to go to a travel agent. I pay them money, and um, I should get it back with under with under two weeks quite easily um, with that. Eating is just a breeze. There's so many different restaurants here. You can have really nice food for $2.50, and a can of Coca-Cola may cost you $1, or a bottle of water near enough the same. Or you can cook at home. Um, most people would be renting an apartment, so it'd be better if you had a gas cooker, because the electric is quite expensive here. And if you have your air conditioning on, like me, 24-7, at the moment, it's summertime. Um, Southeast Asia, like Thailand and the Philippines, it's summer. And so the temperature is, well, my inside temperature, I have the air conditioning on at 25, so it's been on for a couple of hours, so it's actually quite cool. But outside, it's like 35 degrees. This is summertime. Come June, it's going to be raining, not all the time, but it will rain, which actually cools it down. And it's great with the first rain, because it seems like it cleans, because it hasn't really rained since you could say the beginning of November. So uh, retirement option, you could say, what's it similar to? It's not similar to Pattaya in Thailand, which is all like go-go and lovely, sexy girls, all the place who want to be your girlfriend, for, wife for one day or for, well, maybe eternity, etc. And that is great to visit. It's good fun. I've got quite a few friends there in Pattaya and I go there about two, two or three times a year just to hang out with my friends. And it is a big city, but here is sort of like <sighs> quiet in that way. The traffic can be a little bit chaotic. And if you are riding a motorbike for the first time, you can ride a motorcycle without a license as long as it's under 125. But don't drive like a kamikaze pilot. Don't drive at 90 kilometers an hour. Make sure you wear a helmet and your motorbike has the mirrors. Then you've got a small, the police won't stop you if you're not speeding. Helmet, mirrors and it's in reasonably good shape then they're not going to be interested in you at all 
but don't drink and drive don't even think about it at all so if you want to go out drinking just take one of the local transport systems like a tuk-tuk it may cost you one dollar to five dollars to get to your destination depending how far you are you will find in the end that you do have one favorite tuk-tuk driver i have one he takes me to the airport for uh, 18 dollars for example and if we need to go into town we're going out for the evening and i'm going to drink well we'll take that for example so it's a lot easier than getting a fine getting your motorbike confiscated just because you got alcohol on your breath but i have been stopped here once and it's the reason being that naughty soapy my lovely partner wasn't wearing a helmet on the back of my bike and the fine was about five dollars something like that i know it's not a big deal but it's the whole principle of it and it's easily avoided so sometimes don't follow the locals if you want to know what's happening, then you can go on Facebook, you can type in CM Rip on Facebook and you can find lots of communities if you want to join in the community. And mostly this could be some kind of bar that you would hang out in or some kind of exhibition or some kind of activities where some of the foreigners would take part in. And the locals welcome the foreigners with open arms here. So it's really nice in that way. And they don't actually stare at you, go, oh, you got white skin no, those kind of days are sort of gone in many places in asia unless you go deep 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 into the countryside but with that and the cost of living i would say is the main reason why people come here the visas are so easy ridiculous to get and the cost of living yeah a, a single person in a, an apartment let's say 300 for the apartment let's say 100 each week for the food and the electricity is another 100 the water maybe an extra 15 your visa you can think about as one dollar per day and the additional expenses is maybe you want to travel to thailand by plane and maybe a little bit of drinking so what's your budget what are your vices do you like going out or are you quite happy staying at home but do find something to do otherwise you'll just sit in front of the tv all day and you go oh i miss america or i miss the uk but have enough money to go back there for a holiday for one or two weeks so you can see your loved ones and your family and catch up with them and realize how lucky you are living in southeast asia where you're not going to get snow it's it is really hot but that's a small sacrifice now do i miss the beach no would i retire to would i move location to thailand no can i afford it yeah i could but it's sort of just like it's a thailand for me is a place to visit and to enjoy and then leave and then look forward to the next time if it's part of your daily life i would say me possibly i would get bored related to that so living in Cambodia, it's not what you expect if you're uh, if you've just seen the war movies between the two. I think it's time for a break because I have some dinner coming or maybe lunch. So even if you have been to Asia and you possibly think of retiring in Asia, before you pack up your bags, sell everything, put some stuff into storage or whatever, you've got no commitment in minnesota or in los angeles you're sort of like it's too expensive it's whatever then take two months in asia go to thailand go to the places like chiang mai bangkok phuket um, pattaya and have a look around but as i said before don't look around as a tourist look around as a potential uh, to see that you may want to live there but don't just stay two or three days i would say at least a week or two in each place Come here to see Amrit Cambodia, see the difference. Chiang Mai in Thailand, see the difference. I wouldn't say Bangkok, but if you like the hustle and the bustle of a very crowded and polluted city, then by all means. And uh, Phuket, maybe Vietnam as well. Maybe some places like Da Nang or Hanoi. But I wouldn't say Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon. Uh, it's just a big city. Uh, places in the Philippines, I've lived in the Philippines before, uh, mainly for, um, I was working there, and that's a nice place, but I wouldn't go to Manila. I would actually be a place more like Cebu in the Visayas, which is this in the center of the Philippines. It's a lot cheaper, and 
I've never had any real problem in the Philippines. So um, the nightlife actually is excellent. Um, Tokyo and places like Osaka, great to visit, but just really expensive to live. And you would need to have quite a reasonable pension. But the thing is, if you sort of live in a, a place which is not expensive and you're really, truly happy here, then you can have vacations every two months, for example, because your visa would be multi-entry and you can go to places like um, Pattaya quite easily from here, or you can go to Bangkok and you could fly off to Hong Kong or Tokyo to see these places as a tourist. It's a lot easier than doing it from the United States of America. So <clears throat> there's all these to consider. And the cost of it all, well, Apart from the developed cities like Singapore or Tokyo or even Seoul in, in South Korea, then yeah, 2000 should be more than enough. But it, it's like the visa requirements for you. What is the minimum? Here is so easy. Uh, Thailand is something like 800,000 baht, which is 20 something thousand dollars in a bank account. Don't quote me on that. It can change. I haven't looked at it for ages. Um, and which place would you like to spend the rest of your life in? For me, I've always been in cities and big places around the world. That was my work before. So coming here is sort of like a step back and there is near enough everything I want. There's a huge supermarket, there's a banking system, immigration is easy, so many restaurants to choose from, it's not very expensive. You can just buy a motorbike if you want a new quite nice one maybe three thousand dollars but you can get cheaper than that two thousand one thousand five hundred just taking your time with that and joining in a, a community otherwise you'll be sitting again on your balcony uh, drinking yourself to death with lots of beer or whiskey talking about whiskey if you do want a bottle of jack daniels no let's say jim beam I think one lease now is maybe 14 or 15 American dollars. If you do smoke, um, I think the most expensive cigarettes are Marlboro at $15 for one carton. That's 10 packets of cigarettes inside the carton there. Gasoline, about $1.50 per litre. Now, if you're on a motorbike, uh, then, well, maybe three or $4 per week. On that a car obviously a lot more than uh, that uh, what else i just work out that the visa i just say one dollar a day for that so uh, seven dollars a week thirty dollars a month etc um, for that and that's just easy to do to renew your passport that's a bit of a headache i've done it once i will have to do it next year and you have to go to the capital and I haven't really looked at it. Can you do it online or is it still the same old, old way? And you just have to keep track of everything which is going on because your passport when you are overseas as an expat is the most important thing. You lose it, it's a big headache because you would have to go back to your original country on an emergency passport, but you get a new passport, then go back here again, getting your original visa, then transferring that visa into getting a a retirement visa or work visa or whatever you're here for, a student visa, for example. So that's something that I always are secure about. Break. Are there any dangers or annoyances? Well, you could say the same as anywhere else. Um, here in Cambodia, I haven't had any problems at all. Um, and it's just being smart basically or even a little bit of street sense if you're don't go to a dodgy bar in the back of a street don't let one of the touts in let's say the tourist area take you come on this is a great place to have a drink and they take you down a dark alleyway never to see the light of day again in other words you don't have any money left in your pocket i have met one or two people who have been um who have actually been living on the streets and some of the Cambodian people have been really kind and taken them into their own home to get themselves back on the feet. So that's how friendly and you could say nice the Kuma or the Cambodian people are. As long as you're relatively sensible that like you are in New York City or you are in, I don't know, Kansas City, for example, or Miami or Fort Lauderdale, then you'll be fine. And Compared to some cities around the world, yeah, I would say this is very safe, but no city in the world. So don't be lured, no city in the world is 100% safe. So don't be lured into the safe um, sense of security. Don't be lured by my words. 
just be wise about it. So if you're paralytically drunk, then make sure you have some, uh, do it at home. <laughs> or I don't know in a way that you know you can get home safely or you know you're feeling to get drunk, then just walk away and say, thank you very much, pay your money and go. Make sure it's the correct money there and you'll be fine. Everyone is individual. So what people like to do in their retirement, it depends. For me, I have a hobby of YouTube. I like to eat some, um, I like to go to restaurants quite often, maybe uh, once or twice a week just for lunch. Evening time, I'm not a big fan of. I'm actually quite happy just with watching Netflix or Amazon or Apple TV. And occasionally we go out at night. I do like to travel um, to different places. So hence, if you ever watch this channel or you're subscribed to this channel, then quite often I do go to Thailand, maybe two or three times a year. It's so easy. It's just a tuk-tuk to the airport through immigration. You sit down, you can even smoke in the airport here in Cambodia, in Siam Rip Airport, it's a new one. And then you get to Thailand, immigration, bam. And then you hang out there for free or four days with your friends and um, it's all sort of like it's very exciting in that way and I've just never had any serious problems here in Southeast Asia and maybe it's just me um, but everyone again is individual so what you like may be very different to what I like so you can criticize me and say oh my god you watch TV every night and go, yeah I do yeah I and once in a while yeah I enjoy a glass of whiskey or maybe six glasses of whiskey but I haven't had a drink for whew, six seven weeks now it doesn't really um doesn't really bother me there are if you are inclined to it there are drugs around but do be careful because I, I don't really know the laws but if you get caught in Singapore well that's your end of your life and the same it could be in Thailand you could be in prison for the rest of your life followed by execution etc so you could say if you're an average Joe then you're tired of the expensive life in London, for example, then come over, have a look, see the feasibility of it. Do you like it? But stay here for a long time, just on a tourist visa. You can always pop in and pop out of the country if your visa expires, etc. And then see if it's feasible. If not, and you don't like it, then, well, at least you know. And maybe there's other countries that you'd like to go and retire in, like uh, France or Spain or Mexico or even Panama, for example. You have to do what you can um, feasibly afford and that you like it, that you love it, that you, this is your home now. Yeah? And make sure it is feasible in a way that you can actually leave without upsetting so many people, for, for example. The list goes on and on. And basically, yeah, I am waffling over this, but I'm just what I'm trying to do is have a small coffee chat with you and talk about the good things and the bad things around here. I've been in Asia ever since 1993. I came here to work, which I said many times before, and I sort of stayed here and it's just my cup of tea, really. And I just had such a great time um, compared to England, maybe I would have had a good time. I don't know, to be honest, but I think I made the right choice there. Let's leave it there for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little chat. My coffee has run out, so that has to be the end of coffee chat. And I have my lunch in front of me on this Monday afternoon. God bless to all. Thank you so much for your time. And if you do like the channel, then please do subscribe. If you do like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this video and you want to share it with your friends, then hey, perhaps you could go on your social media and share it. It all helps with the good old YouTube algorithm, etc., etc., etc. Thank you so much for your time. It's one thing I could never give back to you. Bye-bye.